Welcome to Bilge Talk. I am your host, John Bardcore, and the focus of this podcast is simple. You. I believe there is an opportunity to highlight the Sea of Thieves community at large. And whether you're a content creator, a streamer, a designer, an artist, or a huge superfan, this podcast is meant for you. I have been lucky enough to create a small space for myself in Sea of Thieves content creation. And now, I've created this podcast to share that space with you. If you're interested in taking part, comment here or find me on Twitter at John Bardcore. And I'm always looking for feedback on how to make this podcast better for all of you as well. With that said, let's bring on the first guest of Bill's Talk, Sea of Thieves content creator, Toxie Sinclair. And now we're here with the one and only Toxie Sinclair of Sea of Thieves. Toxie, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well, thank you, John. I'm glad to be here. So why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Okay, so I'm Toxie Sinclair. I make Sea of Thieves content, as you probably know. Um, most famous for shooting wraith balls at people, I guess. Uh, uh, I made that video about PvE ghost cast. And, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, sure you, I'm sure you've seen it. <laughs> And we'll obviously have links to all these videos in the description of the uh, of this video. So you can absolutely go ahead and check out Toxie. So so Toxie, um, I have a bunch of questions for you. And I'm and these are questions that I'm sure the audience is, is looking to know more about you. So first off, walk us through your walk us through your gaming history. Like, w- like, where did it start? Did, did you just start playing games when you played Sea of Thieves? Or was there something more beyond that? Okay, so, like, I, I think, like, with most people my age, like, I grew up playing video games. Uh, I think, like, my earliest memory is, like, playing Sonic 2 on the Mega Drive. Um, but, like, in terms of, like, I feel like there's two kinds of gaming, right? There's, like, playing video games and there's, like, taking video games seriously. Um, I, I took Pokemon very seriously. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think, um... What, what was, I, I, what was I, your I was, starter Pokemon? So no, 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 no. we're not going to talk about star Pokemon. I'll t- <laughs> so, okay, here is here, here's the thing, John. I was really into competitive doubles, which was the main format, and in in Sword and Shield, which was the previous generation, I got uh, <laughs> I got fifty. I got like rank fifty one on the ladder with a gimmick team with Snorlax and Indeedee, and <laughs> like so. <laughs> This is like this is one of those things, right? I don't really feel like I'm just <laughs> gonna start talking about the most niche thing possible, John. Have you heard of a custap berry? Have you heard? <laughs> I I have not heard of that. No, no. No, no I, I'll leave it there. But I was really, uh, really into competitive Pokemon. Also, competitive Smash Bros. That was like another thing I was really into. Uh, so I I would like I'd point at those as like. That was like when I like those were games I took seriously. Okay. Okay. Um, and so then, what? What? What about the transition into Sea of Thieves? Sea of Thieves, sir. I sw- I remember like vaguely hearing about Sea of Thieves when it first came out in like 2018 or whatever, and I, I didn't have a PC to play at the time, so I just kind of ignored it. Like I was like, "Oh, that's cool. Too bad I can't play that." But um, I actually completely forgot about it, and I uh, I my friend uh, built a like actual decent PC for me. And I remember watching, was it like E3 or something, uh, in 2021 when Pirate Life was announced. And I was like, yo, that game looks so cool. Wait, I can play it. <laughs> so I literally picked it up. Uh, like, was it two weeks before Pirate Life came out? And just had a good time. Did you actually finish the Pirate's Life campaign? No, it's actually really ironic, right? I bought it because <laughs> of Pirate's Life and I got so into the game that I, to this day, I haven't finished all of the Pirate's Life tool tales. I think that's one of your your sub goals, right? Or does... it is, yeah, we actually hit that sub goal. I just haven't done it yet. But I need to do it before Monkey Island comes out. Oh man, the the <laughs> clock is the clock is ticking on that one. That's it only a month ticking. only a yeah. month away. <laughs> so what what drew you to what drew you to to continuing to play Sea of Thieves? So so you started off with you know learning about pirates' life, and you're like, oh, that's cool, Pirates of the Caribbean and the pirate game, cool. But what what keeps you playing? Just like the freedom to kind of like, it, you know, it's what the developers say about the game all the time, right? Like, 
it's a sandbox and you can do anything and they're kind of right like this game gets a rep for like oh it, there's no content and stuff like but like the, the 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 interactions and the journey and like the the individual sessions like to me it always feels fresh like i don't know i mean you get days where it's like oh i don't know not like the most amazing session but like i do think that that the freedom to kind of make what you want in sea of thieves do what you want is what keeps me playing it and like i think that like on top of that like making content for this game is really fun because of that factor so would you say that's that's your favorite aspect to it which is the the making content part to it like you just enjoy playing the game because you're making content for the game or is it like um it's a... the freedom to do whatever like Got it. that's what i like that, that's what i like about it and that's you know absolutely true i mean i it's something that i've always said why do i keep playing the game um i, I keep playing the game because every time i log in something different can happen like it yeah. like it, it can be a different experience every time um as long as you want it to be like you can do hourglass obviously non-stop and it'll be the same sort of thing but uh hop into adventure and just you know go sailing uh it's it's just a, a phenomenal experience so i yeah. i totally understand yeah uh all right now let's uh let's 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 try and be a little bit controversial here the best uh crew size for you do you prefer playing solo a duo brig or a galleon okay uh so i think duo on a sloop is the perfect way to play this game because like first of all the sloop's like the most fun to be on like <laughs> i like i like fighting larger ships on the sloop like it's fun feeling like an underdog i think that's like the appeal of the sloop but also, like, I've made, like, a lot of close friends through this game because of this game, like, and I think that, like, playing one-on-one -on -one with someone really just kind of, like, allows you to get to know someone just through proximity. Like, you're sailing around, there's a lot of downtime in this game, and I really adore playing duo for that reason. Do you have a, a go-to duo person? I don't. I, <laughs> I try and, um... <laughs> I try and play with all of my friends, but like, as I get busier, it gets harder and harder to like play with everyone. Totally understandable. Uh, I mean, yeah. that's that's one of the hardest things about finding a uh, finding a regular crewmate is that, uh, you know, timelines have to match. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What do you think is your 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 best? Like going back on your on your history with with Sea of Thieves, you've been playing since Pirates Life. Now we're we're approaching, uh, you know, you're two years in now, right? At this point, because Pirates Life came out back in 2021, yeah. it's it's now 2023. What what do you think has been the the best Sea of Thieves moment you've experienced as a player? Not specifically as a content creator, but as a as a as a player, what do you think is the best moment you've experienced? Uh, as a player, yeah, it's. I, I feel like the lines blur because, like, I would say my. The best experience was the final push to get the um, Blessing of Athena's Fortune. I feel like that's like one of those big milestones for players. And I had to like learn a lot about PvP. Like, <laughs> it's it's kind of funny to see like PvP prior to Hourglass versus PvP after. Like, it's uh, it's kind of jarring to me like to see like if I, you know, I've got like footage from from back before Hourglass. And like, I'm like, oh my God, I was so, I mean, I'm dog uh, Excuse me, you have to censor me. <laughs> Don't worry, there'll, was... be, there'll, be, there'll be a chicken ready for you. Yeah, okay. I was really <laughs> bad. Uh, I, I would say I was really bad at PvP and I don't think I'm the best now, but like, I do think that the Blessing of a Venus Fortune is like one of those moments for me. And it was like heightened because it was the, I, I got mine on my first stream, I was like, I'm gonna try out streaming. I'll give it a go. I'll, I'll get. I'll do the last five levels on the stream. And so yeah, I, I, like I know that you said like outside of any content career, but I I will say that that whole experience was really magical to me. Was it uh, was it added magic because of the fact that your chat was with you? I guess on this on this journey. I do I do think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do think so. What about uh, what about the worst? And when I say the worst, it doesn't have to be something that's like 
sad i guess maybe uh embarrassing could also be uh, a factor in here as well if you want to include something like um a failed excursion or like just looking looking quote unquote bad in front of others uh, like your viewers for example like like let's let's dig deeper here. let's find out let's find out what what uh what's what dark secrets Toxie's hiding on this one <laughs> okay so i think that every time i fail a sword lunge off the ship i on stream i just feel so like i'm being judged right now <laughs> but, um, so, so when you're when you're trying to lunge and then you just hit the corner of the ship and you're just like you're just yeah, there mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. you just like tap the like the banister or something or like it's even worse if you jump too early and just <laughs> like an idiot <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it, so that's like i would say those are like the, the most embarrassing things like or like oh my god no hold up actually <laughs> literally i think it was on sunday just gone I was tucking in someone's crow's nest. Okay. We would, I found some, yeah, it was it. We were doing like a smash and vault stuff. I went into a crew's crow's nest. They didn't see me. And then one of them climbed up and started sorting me. And I just, I just didn't know what to do. And then I died and they were literally like the definition of a crab lord. And I just was so embarrassed. <laughs> what is what? So, so for those who don't understand, what is the definition of a crab lord? Um, someone that buys the crab cosmetics and they're quite new to the game still. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> did they do? Did no, they do no a crab dab on you? Did they do a crab dab uh, on you? Oh, I, I, I don't. They didn't. Thank God. Okay. Okay. I don't think I would have wanted to live that down. <laughs> but um, for, okay, so that's embarrassing. But mm -hmm. worst moment, uh, it was during like the beginning of season nine, and I was swimming away with a chest of fortune. I had no food, I had no shots, I had no blonder bombs, and I'm getting sharked. Uh, my friend is in a black screen, so he can't get to me. And I, I die, and the chest of fortune sinks before we get there. It was so painful. I That's was, why I hate sharks. I was there for that stream. I do recall you this. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. I, yeah. You were trying to get to, I think it was Smugglers. I think it was, I think it was either Smugglers Bay or... or uh, that's where the that's where the chest sank at least near there. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> and you just you just feel that sort of like pit in your stomach. You're like, mmm, that 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 time that time spent. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for opening up. Um, <laughs> I wanna I wanna pivot a little bit to some of some of like your your personal opinions on the game. Um, I know that um there are different camps. Um, so. Um, this is not this is not promoting one camp or another. I just want to see what Europeans are on it. Um, how do you feel about the balance of PvP and PvE in Sea of Thieves right now? I feel like it's both still. I feel like it's always been both. I know that like PvPers like to say that like the game doesn't make any PvP content, but like I don't know, literally every new item they add to the game, like the Chest of Fortune, that's a PvE and a PvP uh, update. Like you can steal it. <laughs> Like, I feel like the balance has always been good, um, personally. Do you have a preferred playstyle for yourself? Do you do more PvP or more PV? See, I would have said, like, I would have said, like, six months ago, I do PvP, but, um, I feel like I do both now. I, 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 like, it's more fun to experience all of the game than to just do one part, I, th I feel. Like, I like the rush of having, I just did, like, a bunch of vaults or something and they're on my ship and now i'm being attacked like that's really fun <laughs> you're being attacked by by a pve element or from a pvp or uh, by a pvp -er. got it got it got it's, it. Not, it's not scary if it's a pve element like i don't know i, I say that the roar is scary i have been i have been hit by the meatballs but I, I would say i am the definition of a pvpv -er, i feel like like i like to embrace all of the game at the moment okay okay and uh what what is your what is your play style for both so with pvp if i really want to be pvping like i'm either gonna hop for a fort of fortune that has someone doing it because i want to steal it from them you know i think that that's always a fun thing to do in this game or i will just do uh hourglass and because hourglass gives you like that real just raw pvp kind of like almost sterilized distilled experience even though it's in adventure mode still so those are those are like i don't know i used to like hunt ships but like i feel like 
there's just no point in doing that. Like, if someone doesn't have treasure and they don't want to fight, it's literally not fun. <laughs> like, I, like, what do I get out of this? They don't even have anything. <laughs> yeah. As for PVE, um, it's either like I want to do a commendation. Like, I, I actually um, and this wasn't for content. I just wanted to play with my friend last night, but I got my last ten barnacle chests, and I was really fun. I had a good time uh doing the fleet and. I only had to find a couple more. They didn't actually drop too many, considering it was a flute. But yeah, uh, usually it's a commendation or I need money. That's, you know, and and uh, that money leads to more content. <laughs> like does, like yeah. most recently you you posted a uh, 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 tweet about bringing the gold back to shores of gold. <laughs> so so yeah, can, we... you, can you tell a little bit about that experience? Yeah. It was just, okay, so it was a really dumb idea my friend Suki and I had, where everyone always says that the Shores of Gold doesn't have any gold, and they should have gold, so we stacked treasure for 10 hours, uh, which was a, a, an experience in of itself, because we stole a Fort of Fortune and a shrine off of someone, and then we did a bunch of Ashen Vaults, uh... And we did, oh, we did my, I had a gilded uh, Athena voyage we did as well, so. <laughs> it, and then we just, we uh, we brought it to the Shores of Gold and we buried it. Uh, spoilers for that video. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, well, I don't know whose video is going to come out first, so. <laughs> but yeah, true, true. Spoilers or not spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> um, well. That's awesome. I, and when you come up with these ideas, is it, is it just something like, is it just because it's a fun idea in your head or is it just like, um, like this may be, this may be leading questions on for later on, but I'm just curious like what your thought process is for like, what makes a good, what makes good content for you? It's the uh, outlandish ideas. I think that make good content, right? Cause like everyone has, everyone has made content on this game. Like, the, the 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 thing about this game is okay so if someone's made of let's say someone makes a video of their experience doing the legend of the veil and that's really popular now that anyone that makes a legend of the veil video it's kind of outside of the individual experiences you might have it is still the same voyage and for me i like to try and what can i do that's like unique like i've you know i've done everything in this game like I, I know what you're talking about, about this leading on to other things, but yeah. Uh, content creation for this game to me is like a secret checklist of commendations I have. I'm like, oh, I got to do this for my commendation. <laughs> That's how I see it. Gotcha, Make gotcha. Bring the gold back. So this is, so in effect, this is all leading toward making sure that Toxie 100% Sea of Thieves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> when we're talking about, you mentioned earlier that you, you don't feel like... Um, you like encounters with with players on the seas in adventure when you're looking for PvP. Um, when you do encounter other players, though, how do you like? How do you approach that situation? If I have treasure, I'm gonna be more cautious, and I might just, I don't know, see what they're gonna do. I, I think most of the time it is a see what they're gonna do. But if I wanted, like, if they're at a fort of fortune, I'm just gonna attack them if I'm going over there. But if it's just like a ship I'm passing by. What I tend to do these days is I just go over and just see what they're doing, say hi, maybe take their chain shots if possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I think that, like, it's very um, baby PvPers, right? Because I think every person that becomes a PvPer, that their first phase, they'll just sink anyone they see. doesn't matter, but you miss out on, like, a lot of interesting interactions and just people when you're just instantly hostile. And I like going over and talking to people because you never know what you never know what like someone's up to. And it might be interesting. Have you been recognized? Uh, yeah, a lot. <laughs> and how do you handle those situations? I, I actually I like to play it up. Like I I kind of treat I kind of treat it like um I kind of treat it like being a notorious pirate. Like like yeah like yeah it is me. Of course it's me. <laughs> like, <laughs> Because, like, every, I, a lot of content creators will just go, no, you, you're confusing me for someone else. Like, you see that a lot on, with streamers, but I mm -hmm. like to play it up. I think it's more fun that way. C kind of RP with it a little bit. That's it for the that's it for the gamer section of Toxie. And now we're now we're going to move into uh, a bit more about the person, um, which is something that I'm excited about um, because I feel like, you know, we don't really get to know uh 
too much about the people that we're watching, you know, or the people that we're interacting with. Um, so I'm very excited uh, to to hear from you on this. Um, so talk to the person. Um, first question for you. What do people misunderstand about you the most? So um, people think I'm a boy, which I'm not. I am a girl. I'm trans. Um, yeah, I think that the, there's a there's people that don't know that. So yeah. <laughs> uh, is this is this something that is this something that you have uh, just recently kind of come out with, um, or is it something that you've like hinted at, or, or is it something that you've kept kept within? So I think it's been. I mean, so I've kind of built a very uh, queer community because the you know like if you're if you're queer you kind of can tell, but if you're not it's like you know there are definitely people like huh oh, didn't know that about you, um, but I was honestly scared to be like super public with like that aspect of me like who I who I am as a person because there's the consensus that if you're uh, you know for me it's not it's more it's more of like a personal fear right like if i'm open and i know that like people there are, there's a group you know there, there's gonna be people that hate you for who you are basically and i was scared of that but uh building the community i have i realized like i can i can live like freely like a pirate <laughs> and, and so so you equate that sort of freedom with with sea of thieves a little bit, yeah. I do, I do, uh, I do, owe, I do feel like I owe a lot to this game. I really do. That's awesome. By the time this video posts, people may have seen a tweet from you, um, or may not. I don't know if you'll delete it later on. I'm not sure <laughs> because no, because <laughs> okay, okay. Um, and and I just saw like like the amount of support that you had in in the in the comments of that of that tweet. I thought was was phenomenal. So. Um, I think I think that's a great aspect to the Sea of Thieves community as a whole. What what do you feel is is the best compliment you've ever gotten as a person? Uh, so this is like this is definitely like it was like sometimes people just leave a comment on my videos being like I love your voice and that would always make me happy. So I probably say that and uh, when I put my when I tweeted like it's kind of like a semi selfie. People told me I was pretty. So I, I would point at those two things as like, those things are very nice to me. Like, it's all well and good to be told you're good at the game, but like, that means a lot more to me. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you, vanity coming through. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> what, what do you think, uh, what's an insult, a uh, quote unquote insult that you've received, but that you're proud of? You're like, hell yeah, of course. Um, I got called like, a, uh, like a, a newbie or like a noob for uh firing like the wraith balls at that ship once like someone commented like noobs use curse balls like yeah whatever bro <laughs> <laughs> like i like that one of the most powerful cannonballs in the game if not the yeah. most powerful cannonball of course i'm gonna use yeah, it why mean? wouldn't why yeah, wouldn't i use mean? it <laughs> if i can if i can lead in on that real quickly i do think that this community is incredibly there's, there's a side of this community that i find fascinating where it's like they're they're like pro some, you know pro quotation marks exploits right but mm -hmm. then they're against like using the tools in games so, like someone that's like pro double gun pro harpoon warding will then be like you curse spammed me you blunder bomb spammed me it's like what <laughs> there's a you, you use the sword it's like, yeah. <laughs> I, I i i can i can i can agree with that and and there's a term for it in the u.s at least i don't know i don't know if you're familiar with it toxie um mm. but but it's called armchair quarterbacking do you I'm know not that familiar with that, not... but that sounds i i think i get it like yeah armchair coaching right exactly it's it's just it, you know it's, it's it's just you know i wouldn't do it that way and i'm gonna tell you about it <laughs> yeah okay yeah. i like that <laughs> um yeah. But yeah, I mean, everyone, everyone has their own play style, obviously, you know, people, you know, people, I, I'll, I'll go back to the, to the fishing example, just because, you know, I heard a lot about fishing uh, in, in uh, a video that I posted, um, which was, um, how do you fish for so long? It's so boring. And I'm, and I, and I just go, but it's not, <laughs> you know, it, it's not boring. Um, or yeah, you, you, you know, enjoy it. You know, and, and people have, you know, people have a, a, a particular sort of like setup. If they like to double gun, that's fine. If they like sword and, and whatever, that's fine too. Like, um, it's just a matter of 
whatever they're most comfortable with that doesn't necessarily matter to the person it only matters to the person who, who just got beat by that that's that's when it really matters to them <laughs> so that's so true yeah <laughs> What is it with the fishing thing like i'm definitely guilty of like saying it's boring but like i'm not gonna tell someone not to fish like it i don't get it but that doesn't mean it's not valid one day one day talk to you, i'm gonna take you fishing you're gonna convert me to I'm gonna, fishing. i'm gonna convert you to fishing have you done have you done a fishing stream yet i so i actually did i did it was it i did a six hour fishing stream uh a few months ago it was quite it was yeah probably a few months ago now it was for a it was for a sub goal um i i, I did have a good time because we we kind of like it was like i'm gonna make fishing sexy i'm gonna like go to the fort of the damned and set the fort of the damned up uh gonna sail around the storm like that the, like I, there's aspects of fishing i do think that are interesting i think that like if you can like make a shipwreck with like the athena shipwreck right with the voyage mm -hmm. the veil mm -hmm. and then like try and get you know wait for the storm to come there i think things like that like to make the storm those storm wreckers appear like that's interesting to me i do like that aspect of it but like the just sitting there fishing itself is not fun to me because it just takes too long what's your biggest you know what, what what has been your your biggest failure your biggest opportunity um oh, and, yeah and and what did you you know what did you learn from that experience i mean there were like i, I feel like with as with everyone right there were like so many moments in your life where you fail and you learn but like in regards to like, I don't know, in regards to like what we're talking about here, I would say, like, obviously, this CFU's channel is not the like my first try at making YouTube content. Like, I've been wanting to be a content creator for a long time. Um, and I think like with each failure, you kind of learn and you move forward. And I, I think that like, I would point at like, all of the things I did prior, which I'm never going to share with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be a follow-up question, which is, which is ever, are we ever going to see Toxie 1.0? <laughs> no, no, definitely not. <laughs> what, 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 was, what was the game? What was the game? Oh, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm, I'm what? Not, no, no, no. People will somehow find it. You know what freaks are like on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> you can hide those things, Toxie. You, you can hide the channel. <laughs> that's true that is true uh it's probably our stubbornness that i don't but yeah that's it fair. is out there <laughs> that's fair the next sea of thieves mystery right there <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh no <laughs> <I'm sweating now. laughs> being able to fail forward is such a thing to like be aware of and be like you you it, failure isn't bad you can fail forward you can fail and learn and improve and like i definitely feel like i say definitely but I feel like I have a grasp on what how to make content that is interesting, and I do have uh, I do have ideas for other games that I don't want to I don't want to do yet because I want to focus on Sea of Thieves still. But there is going to eventually be a second channel with the other things I want to do mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I feel you know because I feel like I've learned from prior endeavors and even what I'm currently doing today. Well, I mean, uh, we're seeing that we're seeing that now with with several other. Um uh sea of thieves uh content creators even sea of thieves partners who are looking to to branch out into other into other games i think people are just uh you know obviously you know you're you play the games you love um and in terms of in terms of content creation you know it's just a matter of how do you um how do you um basically make sure that you're playing the games that you love but also uh are producing content that people are going to watch um, and and that you're going to enjoy producing as well. Don't uh, don't ever feel like and this. This goes out to pretty much anyone. Don't ever feel like your your first attempt at content creation is is means that you're you're done. Um, you're obviously hearing it from Toxie that like you can keep at it. <laughs> you know you can keep trying and and you will you will succeed. It just it's just a matter of iteration. It's it's a matter of iteration and. Uh not giving up on what you want to do and following like to a degree following advice from people that have found success like i was like i'm gonna actually listen to like was it like the vid iq youtube channel right they kind of I, i'm sure you've heard of like the vid iq tool for youtube right yes so, like yeah. yeah they give 
new content creators a lot of good free advice <laughs> like their videos are really good and i've tried to you know like i remember the thumbnail video uh i definitely feel like i learned things about thumbnail creation because of that and like understanding that like thumbnail and title are like almost paramount important like you should kind of have those things figured out before you even make the content and that's why when i make content I usually have an idea of because I have a title and thumbnail I want to make. Like I, I just yeah, <laughs> it's. I think it's just it's it's good to learn from your mistakes and keep pushing forward. What we're going to what we're going to do actually, and, we're, and this is kind of going to lead on into our next segment, which is around um, creation um, specifically. Um, and the first question, the first question I have is is did you always did you always consider creating content for sea of thieves like you mentioned earlier uh that you got into sea of thieves because of pirate's life um did you always think from day one that like i can create content for sea of thieves for it or or was there like a moment where you're like i can do this well this would be um, this this would be good video though <laughs> yeah yeah um so i was working on other things when uh i picked this game up this was just a game i played for fun um I have like, it, you know, like I, I played it like here and there. It wasn't like ever my main game. I just enjoyed it. I would try and find time for it. Uh, I almost gave up on it at first because it was like it's so brutal for new players, this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially like I didn't have any friends that wanted to play it. Uh, I was too, too shy to make friends online, which is ironic now in my opinion, considering all my friends I've made through this game. But there was like a moment, yeah, like... I probably had about like 500 hours and I was just like, I'm just like enamored with this game. Uh, I want to make content for it. Uh, like, you know, like this was like a, around the time like Cliff's channel had only just started like being a thing as well. Like we're talking like February of 2022. I think his channel started in January and like there was definitely a moment of like, because like one of the things that I was worried about at first was I don't know if this game is popular enough to make content for and sink my time into. Sure. And I feel like his channel doing well kind of motivated me to be like, I I'll give it a go. Like I like this game. I'm gonna try it out. Like, you know, seriously for content creation instead of just a game I enjoy. Uh, I would say that was like the pivotal moment, like for me. So watching watching Cliff's content then as an example is just, so did you decide that from that point you were going to be a, a storyteller type of content creator because there are other content creators out there there's you know PVP uh, yeah. like cracked I guess content creators they're they're the uh, the ones who go in specifically for the steals like how did you decide what sort of content creator you're going to be? This leads into the thing I was saying earlier about vidIQ right so. They will be the first people to tell you that storytelling is the way to make good YouTube content. Like, uh, and I, 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 you know, like, uh, some people might not realize this, but like, I'm, I'm fairly certain that Cliff was inspired by people like, like Wellen and Barney64, who also do content, uh, storytelling style content for, you know, like mo a multitude of games. Uh, so I, I always knew as a content creator, like you story based content, like is the way to make content, especially when you have a piece of information you can give someone through a story that I think is like the ideal way to make content. How do you feel that approach has served for you? Uh, really well. I think, um, like <laughs> it. it so well, I remember like the people at vidIQ would literally call storytelling like it's like reten it's like audience retention hacking because by leading someone for a story you're kind of keeping them watching they're like well what's gonna happen next or and it, like it really adds on to itself when you have a piece of information like as a good example of this like uh my video I made recently about the 50 ships uh it starts with a premise, a, 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 you know, a silly premise. And the goal is, well, what happens when you get class 50? And so I can then lead you for a story of, I need gold, I gotta get gold. And then at the end, I can give you the big, you know, the info dump. And I feel like those two things combined is just like actual, like, <laughs> when, when I post a video, 
you know, like when it tells you what your top moment is on a video on the retention chart, I've yeah. had it have the whole video as a top moment on a mm. couple of videos before. And I feel like that's the perfect example of why storytelling is how is the, the most powerful way to make a YouTube video. You know, I can absolutely see that. Um, yeah. And and uh, story. I absolutely agree with you that storytelling is a critical, critical aspect to yeah. at least at least for youtube um i yeah, mean it, for, YouTube. It, yeah. for, for youtube specifically I mean, I mean it can be different for for streaming um it can be different for short form content like uh, like for tiktoks um i think there's yeah. there's different there's different ways it can work for different platforms but for youtube specifically i i yeah. personally agree with you that storytelling is the way to go yeah i mean like it, it really is and like so yeah like as you say right with like tiktok like i would point at a really useful piece of information will do wonderfully well like i don't want to brag about it but like my tiktok tip videos have got like within the millions like one million two million views mm -hmm. and it's because i'm like here's a piece of information like that was the, the first one i did really well i was just like if you stand on the gangplank on a skeleton galleon they can't really do anything so you can just farm the curse balls they put in the cannon and that like just did really well because it's like it's a piece of information it's interesting people want to know what uh going into the idea about about how to create your stories for example what does what does your creation routine look like is it just like i'm going to come up with a list of ideas and then and then iterate on them until i find one or is it just like it's an inspirational moment where you're just like i need to know if this works <laughs> i think it, it varies from video to video i think so i've definitely had and I think I think a good example of this, John, is when we collaborated on the Megalodon thing. Uh, that was a we. I need to know, and then we <laughs> did it a few times, and I just wasn't satisfied. And I was like, I'm gonna. <laughs> I think I told you. I was like, I DM'd you, like I'm gonna wake up in the morning and go there again, and just just to see. <laughs> you did. You did do that. Yeah. And then I did it. Like I think I did it a couple more times, and I was like, I feel like that's solid enough proof that it works. So that was a I need to know moment, and. Then there's like, with the 50 ships thing, I think that was probably a need to know, but also it was a, so it was definitely a, uh, I feel like the title would do well scenario, right? Like I bought 50 ships in Sea of Thieves, here's what happens, like mm -hmm, happens. Mm -hmm. That feels like a clickable title. So I, it, it kind of leans in on the like, is it interesting? Is it, you know, is is it interesting, I think, is probably, and do I have a good idea for a title is probably my main things. But I've definitely, I've definitely gone into content where I've had, like, the video before the, the idea. But th I feel like those videos never do as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. It's interesting you mentioned the Megalodon uh, video because I'm going to admit something to you uh, that I, I don't think I've ever told you. Uh, I was super jealous that uh, that you managed to get that video out because I didn't think it was going to work. I honestly did not think that it was it was a good enough cons because we didn't get one. <laughs> yeah. So so the goal the goal for those who are watching right now the goal of the video was to get a shrouded ghost, and uh, I was of the opinion uh, that if we didn't get a shrouded ghost, it wasn't going to be enough for an actual video. Like we had streamed it, and I had streamed it on on YouTube, and I was like, you know what, I'm good with that, and I'll just leave it be. Toxy uh, Toxy decides to go one step further. <laughs> And 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 creates and and creates the piece of content, um, uh, finishing it up uh, with some with some solo stuff, and it it did I think over a hundred k on your on your views. I was just under, but yeah, I would. It's definitely one of my. I would point out like this was a popular video I made. Yeah, and it's ironic, right? Because I've always, I've always have been of the opinion that like PVE content is so hard to make videos for. It's never interesting enough, but like. There was not a single fight in that video, and it's one of my most popular. So, <laughs> like, I definitely like being around you, John, and your content has definitely opened my eyes to like, there's more to this game than PvP, and like, there's definitely been a revitalized enjoyment of the other aspects of this game by uh, enjoying your content. Like, I wanna, I wanna emphasize that. This is why I say John Bard calls the go <laughs> <laughs> you don't <laughs> untrue untrue I, th I thank you you know it stokes the ego a little bit but but untrue <laughs> <laughs> you make phenomenal content john everyone knows it <laughs> okay okay enough about me this is not this is okay, not yeah, this, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. not my interview 
okay. I feel like I'm being it's being turned around on me. Uh, but <laughs> but I will ask you this. I will ask you that maybe and you kind of already you kind of already talked about it a little bit earlier. But who has been your who's been like your most important mentor or or person that you emulate when it comes to content creation? I I don't want to say like emulate because like I don't I try not to emulate but like I it's more of like a nebulous idea right like uh I believe it's called RT game he's called RT game is he he kind of makes like I I don't know I I don't want to say something that I'm not 100% sure on like I because like a lot of like things have been like uh you know like my partner showing me like oh look at this cool video I can't actually remember who did what but content that's like his like i put a million marbles in my marble machine or something like it's distilling that idea and putting that in, like in into the niche you're in is what youtube is what makes a viral youtube video i think right so i you know and I, I would point at like i i would honestly for sea of thieves i'd point at you john like the five thousand bananas thing like it just kind of like it did something to my brain where I was like, yeah, of course that would do well. Like, of, of course, 5,000 bananas. Because, <laughs> like, I would point at my 50 ships thing as a very Bardcore inspired idea. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I would say, honestly. Um, to a degree, like, uh, for Sea of Thieves as well, Fuzzy Bond and Cliff, obviously. Like, I think Cliff kind of... He... He kind of like he didn't pave the way for story based content because I think Wellen did it first, right? But mm -hmm. he solidified the idea, and I think that like that's kind of like, you know, that's very like respectable. And he kind of solidified the idea of like this is a type of content that can do well for the for Sea of Thieves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not just a one off case where Wellen was already like popular, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I I would I would say uh, for Sea of Thieves. Um, John Bardcore, Fuzzy Bond, <laughs> Cliff the Story Guy. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> and then outside of CFEs, I don't know, because I, I don't know. I really enjoy, um, I really enjoy Wolf Glick. He, he does, uh, it's like Wolfie. He does Pokemon content. He's, I think he's probably the most popular Pokemon YouTuber. Uh, it's again, very similar, right? It's story, but uh, one of my favorite things, he, one of my favorite videos Wolf, uh, Wolfie made was, uh, he was re regaling his story of uh, entering worlds for Sword and Shield, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about all the regionals. Was it, it was, uh, yeah, it was for Sword and Shield. He was talking about all the regionals he was going to. And he would, it was like a story, right? He was regaling a story. He didn't always, there wasn't always footage for the fights. So he'd have to recreate them in game and from best from memory. And he would, you know, it was a story based video. And it's kind of what I was getting at, like, uh, it's again a perfect example of someone telling a story uh being the way to make the best kind of youtube content like he has like 1 million subscribers and i think that's quite a lot for someone that is a competitive pokemon player like competitive pokemon youtubers don't have that kind of view viewership usually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah i i would say like yeah that's a those are like my examples of uh, content creators I am inspired by. What uh, what do you think is is the biggest challenge that you're facing in your role as a content creator right now? I think, and I, I imagine a lot of content creators will say this: the uh, whenever your thing is on a downtrend and you're not big enough to carry it yourself, the fear that it's all gonna blow up in your face. <laughs> Because <laughs> I think currently Sea of Thieves content is, you know, it's, we're at the end of a season. Things mm -hmm. are on a downtrend. Uh, I, I don't think I'm wrong to say that. I don't think. Uh, but I mean, even then, like, things are, like, more than fine. It's just the fear that it's going to go, you know, it's going to go, you know, let's say Sea of Thieves just dies before I'm able to, like, fully pivot to doing other things. Mm hmm, mm hmm. And... I don't want to see if he's to die, basically. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, nope, it's a fair I, point. I do world. This game stays forever because I would happily make content for this game forever. Sea of Thieves 2, <laughs> right? You just yeah, Sea of move, Thieves 2. That's what we need. Move right on into the sequel. Um, so yeah. how how are you how are you tackling that sort of that sort of problem right now? 
when I kept my job, like before I quit my job, yeah, it was like, wake up, edit, go to work, come back, uh, either edit or play the game again. Uh, and it was like really stressful. Mm -hmm, I was like mm -hmm. having like a real, real problem having a personal life. Uh, yeah. So, the moment. Uh, so, yeah, what was the question again? Because I feel like this kind of like is leans in onto that a little bit, honestly. Yeah, about, yeah. Like, tackling the problems, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so the question was, um, what's the biggest challenge you're facing in your role as a content creator right now? And how are you tackling it? Um, focusing on uh, good ideas at the moment. So, I think, um, you know, let's say eight months ago, a year ago, the goal is just make a video every week and ideally i make a video every week but i'd rather make a good idea instead of making a video every week like i think that, like for instance right putting the gold back into the shores of gold that's a 10 hour session to edit down i would be uh i would be unkind to myself if i decided to considering that we did that on sunday and i upload on fridays It'd be so unkind of my uh, to to be to to myself to make that for Friday, like mm -hmm. I think that like yeah for me it's ta like tackling it is self care and realizing that like to a degree there are people that are here for me now and understanding that like it wasn't always like that of course I had to make a video a week like that's how, that was like one of the keys to growing as a content creator and I think you can attest to that idea at least a little bit that like. You know, because I would point at your channel, John, one mm. of the fastest growing channels I've ever seen, like next to Cliff, the story guy, uh, very like fast growing, I, I would say. Um, I mean, you got your tank, you got 10k subs and what I would describe as a very small amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, I, you know, uh, if we want to talk about metrics, like I have no idea like how, how some of these numbers uh, happen other than like, like it's, a, it's the right video at the right time. Uh, honestly yeah. is, is what I would this, say. This is the thing, right? Uh, I had, I have a, I've had this conversation with Siggy a little bit. Um, you, you know, Siggy, of course. uh, where it's like, do you hold on to your good idea for when the next season drops or is your good idea kind of too tied into the previous season? Uh, but I, I, I feel like I've decided that like, if you want to, if you want to grow as a content creator, you shouldn't think about that too much and just post your best work when it's time to post. Right. And yeah, you're going to get lucky when you're, uh, when it's a new season, of course, views are up for everyone. It's wonderful. Everyone loves the beginning of a new season the first few weeks but it's it's how well you're doing outside of that the the good times that shows who your audience is and i think that that's why i want to just make good content all the time so mm. if it means taking a week off in, in so much that like the video is going to take longer to make yeah instead of like pushing myself like and burning myself out taking the time to make that good content and i still aim for the weekly uploads but like when i have a video that's going to take longer i'm going to put the time into it instead of rushing it like the megalodon video right mm -hmm. uh i put i put it i put that off for an extra week because i it, i wanted to make it as good as possible mm -hmm. and i'm glad i did because it, well. it did very well it did very well yeah it's definitely uh, one of my favorite favorite experiences that one like getting to like because that was like the first time we played together and i like i've adored your content since i found you which was like <laughs> actually you know if i can brag it was before the banana video i found you <laughs> was it before it the banana like, video it was it was the one before the the vaults uh oh okay. talking about the gold hoarder vaults yeah yeah, yeah. i have to i remember leaving a comment <laughs> oh yeah you did you said uh, uh i don't do pve but damn if i yeah. don't want to now or something like that yeah, yeah. This, this is what i'm saying john like you fully inspired like <laughs> wow there's more to this game than just fighting people god damn <laughs> like, <laughs> how do you deal how do you deal with a 10 out of 10 video like uh like oh like like in your rankings you know it goes one yeah. out of 10 to a, how do you deal with yeah, what, what was your last 10 out of 10 video and how did you deal with it hold up let me just get my water i'll be back in a sec <laughs> okay okay <laughs> Toxy needs water for this one, folks. Ten out of ten videos. So this is this is um this kind of leans into what I was saying about we're on a downtrend for Sea of Thieves, in my opinion. Um, I'll get my analytics up real quick. 
Um, so the last three videos I put out, in fact, I think it was, um, my stacking cursed treasure. Uh, that was my 10 out of 10 video, like doing mm. badly, quotation marks, mm -hmm. doing badly. Um, it was upsetting at first because I put a lot of time into it and I'm like, there's no way that like this content's like bad. Mm -hmm. Like it can't be like, I don't, <laughs> I don't feel like I've done anything bad. Maybe it's not the most interesting thing. Maybe. Uh, but it was one of those things that like, I was okay with it because I knew I made a good video and mm -hmm. the people that watched it enjoyed it. So, and then you also have to factor in like, is it the, you know, is it because the interest, interest in CFEs is lower at the moment? Like, I don't know. I, you know, like I'm speculating when I say that, but I feel like maybe to a degree that is the case of that. But, um, I just kind of like, I don't know. It's, you know, it's fine. Right. Like, it's 10 out of 10, that's fine. It means you can't have your videos that give you the little confetti and say one out of 10, <laughs> which I love seeing. I love it when I get a one out of 10, mm -hmm. but <laughs> you can't have those without also getting a 10 out of 10, right? Like it's mm -hmm. inevitable. Mm -hmm. Every YouTuber goes for it. Um, I think that um, for me, I just, it's about knowing that like, I, you know, like, it's not a bad video. I didn't make a bad video. Maybe it wasn't the most interesting. I don't know. There's so many external factors that I have no control over. Mm. Like I have made something I thought was good or good enough. And I have to deal with whatever happens with it. Like this is why I, I, I don't like, I personally don't make extra thumbnails. I'll make one thumbnail that depicts what I think is the video the mm. best mm -hmm. because for me, when I, I used to change thumbnails, but like, I don't know if this is helping or not. There's no way of really knowing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, too many external factors. So I just focus on making what I think is a good video. So when you when you're when you're looking at when you're looking at these analytics here, um, how much how much stock as a content creator do you put into like the numbers versus your gut? Oh God, it's 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 the duality, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's so hard to pinpoint, right? Because like, yeah, uh, I stand by the cursed treasure video being good. Like, mm -hmm. I I really thought like I put a lot of effort into that one. I thought it was, thought it was a good video. Um, I think that uh, the numbers are an example. Like, it's what I was, I was kind of leading to earlier. Like, we're in my opinion in an you know a slight interest lull in the game because we're at the end of a season there's no new content people are waiting for the new content and you know people people inevitably stop playing the game at the end of a season and then they'll come back for the new season that's just how every live service game works like it's the inevitable truth of the game mm -hmm. and so i just kind of focus on well they like my core audience is coming to my videos they always are yeah um that is enough for me that makes me happy uh i i'm doing well enough from that with in combined with twitch that it's not you know i want i want those pop-off videos but i sure. you know i'm not big enough to get them mm -hmm. all the time like i think you know because i i think that like there are content creators that are bigger and they will always get a hundred thousand views on like everything they post and mm -hmm. i would love to be in that position like that is a, such a privileged, good position to be in. But I think, um, I don't know, I'm kind of getting lost with what I'm trying to say here, but I think basically I notice the numbers and I try to improve, but there's there's only so much you can do, as sure. I was saying, like with like thumbnails, like I don't ever make two thumbnails because I don't want to, there's no way to know if it's going to help. Like if I change the thumbnail and I watch it for the day, how do I know that that would have, wouldn't have done that without that thumbnail. Like right, sometimes right. people just don't click on your video and then they'll click on it later. Mm -hmm. Like when I put out the 30 chess of fortune video, that's actually a example of this. That video did really poorly. Uh, when it, when I first put it out, like that was like a nine out of 10 video. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, it's like 30 chess of fortunes. And the first one that did it, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and now it has, like, now it's one of my most popular videos. It has like 108,000 views. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that's an example of like, I don't know if I changed the thumbnail, I could have like said, oh, it's because I changed the thumbnail, but like, I didn't change anything about it. I just decided to do better later. <laughs> right, right, right. In your, in your opinion, what do you think is the most important personality trait 
someone needs to be a content creator? Um, personality trait, probably. To be a content creator, you have to kind of, I'm going to say, be a little bit optimistic, honestly. You've got to be a little optimistic. You've got to believe to a degree that you can do it because you're going to have loads of moments where you are co you can't do it and you are failing and it's hard, but you got to push through. Like, you make a good video, it doesn't do well. And when you're a small content creator, like, if I make a bad video, I'm at least, I'm you know, I should at least get 10,000 views at the very least. <laughs> like, it's gonna day one hit 10,000 views and I'm very grateful to to be in that position. Mm -hmm. But when you're s smaller than me, and I would still stay, like, you know, relatively I'm a small content creator, but when you're, like, that small, <laughs> like, like, really to the ground small, those are re those those moments are hard and you have to push through and be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn about something. I'm gonna learn about uh, maybe editing more or learning about thumbnails and titling and just focusing on improving and being optimistic that you will get there. As long as you learn from what you're doing and you don't just, you know, don't just keep doing the same thing and hoping okay. it's going to work out. I don't know. You mm -hmm. got to, you got to grow from it, mm -hmm. enhance your abilities. So just iterate and learn basically is what it, is what it yeah. comes down to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, yeah, we yeah we were saying that earlier, but yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's definitely that. Okay. Be optimistic, and you will probably find success at some point. What is one piece of advice you would give to someone who is just starting out in their content creation journey? Uh, it would be to watch One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, honestly, um, I have yet to watch One Piece. I'm sorry. I can't believe this, John. I I'm can't sorry. Believe this. I'm sorry. Cancelled. Betrayal. I'm sorry. I've seen. I've seen. I've seen the meme. I've seen the meme. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm trying to think. Like, basically, what was the thing that VidIQ people said that like really hit home? And I think it was like, look at what's doing well and see what you can adapt from that. Like, in your, you know, in in niches adjacent to what you're doing. Like, what? How? How are people being successful and what can you do? What can you do that is within the realms of proven to work kind of thing? Mm -hmm. I think that's what I would say. And then you will eventually start finding exactly what you like doing and what you, you know, you, you learn what your audience likes from you and you kind of, it's funny, right? When I first started uh, making content for Sea of Thieves, I was like, I'm just going to play the game and do what I want. But like, as where I'm at now, I want to make videos that people enjoy and I get so much more enjoyment going out of my way to do something that like, is not natural to the game. Like putting the, you know, buying 50 ships or putting the gold in the shores of gold or doing that Megalodon thing we did. Like those are unnatural gameplay experiences, mm -hmm. but they're, they're so enjoyable because of the, like, the enjoyment of making a good video is like way more powerful than you think it is. <laughs> oh yes. Oh no. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, that's, you would, you, I it's, mean, you it's fun. You could it's fun. As well. Yeah. It's absolutely fun. <laughs> yeah. It really is like eating 50 bananas to not make a video is boring, but eating 50 bananas to make for a video. That's, that's <laughs> cool. <laughs> that's what I would say. <laughs> You heard it here first, bananas. Sorry, not 50, 5,000. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if it was only 50, that would have been easy. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. But again, 10 out of 10 video. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> yeah. In incredible. <laughs> um, well, uh, last question for you, Toxie, uh, before okay. we wrap up here. Yeah. What is the one question that you wish I'd asked you, and how would you have answered it? Uh... <laughs> I really don't know how to answer that question, so I will just simply say, you should have asked me what a custat berry was for my Snorlax strategy in Pokemon VGC. <laughs> and what is, what is the, what is that strategy? Okay, fine. We'll go, okay, fine. This is the end of the thing. I'll tell you about it. So basically, right. <laughs> right now, this is going to be a load of stuff that you're, you know, it's going to be words to you, but okay. basically... Pokemon uh, Pokemon VGC is doubles, so you start with two, two. You have six Pokemon, you can choose four, and you start with two. I would lead with Snorlax and Indeedee, because Indeedee would have an ability called Psychic Terrain, which would put a field around all the Pokemon that meant 
priority moves can uh, hit anyone. Now, there's a move called Fake Out, which stops the... Uh, it's a priority move that stops a Pokemon from attacking. It makes them flinch. So I didn't want my Snorlax to be flinched, so I needed Indeedee. Uh, the idea was you send Indeedee out with Snorlax because Snorlax wants to do Belly Drum, which will cut its HP in half to give it to give it plus like max attack it, it plus six attack to its stats uh you know boosted stats uh and then indeedy would use a move called follow me so any targeting moves would have to be directed to indeedy so now my snorlax is half hp but max power and it's not gonna get hit so they're gonna kill my indeedy and i'm gonna send out a dusclops and what's gonna happen is <laughs> Dusclops is a ghost type Pokemon, so it's unaffected by normal attacks. Now, my Snorlax is, has a move called Self Destruct, which is a normal move. <laughs> and it also has the Custap Berry, which I mentioned, which will activate because I have the ability called Gluttony. <laughs> which means <laughs> Snorlax now gets to go first. It eats the berry at the beginning of the turn because it's, it's, it's under a half HP. It's on half HP, so it gets to go first now. And it uses Self Destruct, which kills all the Pokemon. The, aren't ghost Pokemon. And at the same time, my Dusclops then sets up Trick Room, because there's no one to stop it. And then my last Pokemon is usually Glastia, which is amazing in Trick Room, and it would just steamroll their team from there on. <laughs> That's the Custep Very Snorlax strategy that got me to like 51 on ladder. <laughs> Those were indeed a lot of words. <laughs> a lot of words. There's going to be like two people in the like that watch this that get it and be like, Damn, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, for those two people, enjoy. <laughs> and, and and maybe you've inspired three more people to actually go try it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, uh, out of, you know, through all that strategy, is, yeah. like, is that actually, like, an optimal strategy? Or is that... Is it's that a just, gimmick. It's a gimmick. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so it works in best of one, which the ladder was best of one. It would never work in an actual best of three. <laughs> it gotcha. would never work. Yeah, it was a gimmick strategy, but it was very fun. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, Toxie, any, any parting words for the audience? The key curse is real, I guess. <laughs> what is the key curse? <laughs> oh, no, I mean, one day I'll make a video about it. We'll, we'll... The key cast, it's real, I promise. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Doxy. Uh, my pleasure, John. Thanks for having me on.